This decay graph shows the count rate of a radioactive isotope as it decays over 10 days. We measure count rate in counts per minute on the vertical axis and time in days on the horizontal axis. The first question is why did the count rate stop falling after about eight days? And that's true, it does stop falling. It seems to be flat after about eight days. And secondly, we're asked to calculate the half-life of the isotope from our answer to part A. So let's take a look at this situation. So why did the, the count rate stop falling? Well, after eight days, the radioactive isotope has almost completely decayed. And all that we're left with, as far as the count rate that the detector that we're using is picking up, is the background radiation count. And that appears to be 20 counts per minute. So the first thing we can say is that after eight days, the radioactive isotope has almost completely decayed. And we can say that the remaining count rate, which is 20 counts per minute, is due to background radiation. Background radiation, and that could be from sources such as rocks, from cosmic radiation, even inside our bodies. There's a constant background radiation count. So this data is including background radiation. And so what we need to do before we process this data and calculate the half life is to take away the, the background radiation count. And that's something you should do in any radioactivity experiment, is to first of all measure the, the background radiation count and then take that away from any measurements that you make on your radioactive isotopes. So what we'll need to do here is to subtract 20 counts per minute from the original data. So let's do that and uh, we'll start at 100. So that leaves us with 80. We can also do 60. That leaves us with 40. Uh, where else have we got? 40. That leaves us with 20. About there. One at 30. So that will be at 10. And after eight days, we're down to zero. So if we plot a line through those points, and we may want to find a few more points as well, if we had a, a finer scale, then we'd see something like this. And now we can make a half-life calculation. So we start at 80 counts per minute. And remember that half-life is the time taken for half the radioactive nuclei to decay. So if we start at 80, then what's the time taken to get to 40? And that first half-life estimate is one hour. So from 80 counts per minute to 40 counts per minute, we have a time of one hour. And it's best to do this a couple of times and take an average. So let's go from 40 now to 20. And so the time taken from 40 to 20 is another hour. There we are. There's our half-life. That's from 40 counts per minute to 20. So it's looking pretty certain that our half-life is, is very close to one hour. So we'll just do two here. And uh, the average is, of course, one hour half-life.
Note that if you try and do this with the original data, it'll all go wrong and uh, we won't get an hour for the half-life. So you must subtract the background radiation first, then plot on the graph, or you might be asked to do what we've done today and subtract the background radiation from data given in a table or in a graph. Hope that makes sense.